Hey, what is going on everyone? In the last video, what we did was create this cool custom Sudoku board view. Now, if we were to run this program and click our Sudoku board, you'd see nothing happens. What I'd like to do in this video is when we click a cell, I'd like that cell to be highlighted in a specified color along with its corresponding row and column. So let's get started. So this is where we left off in the last video. And to start off, I'd like to add in two new attributes for a Sudoku board. So if we make our way over to the adders.xml file, we can copy and paste this line in twice to add in our two new attributes. And the first attribute, I like to be this the cell fill color of the cell that the user clicks on. So I'm going to call this cell fill color. For the next attribute, I'd like this to be the color of the corresponding row and column that are going to be highlighted. So I'm going to call this cells highlight color. So now we've defined two new attributes. And if you remember from the previous video, we had to extract these from our XML file and store them into a variable within our Java code. So to do that, we can come back over to our Sudoku board.java file and define our two new variables. So if you remember, this was the attribute we defined in the last video. So again, we can copy and paste this line in twice, but change this variable name to the attributes name. So if we type in cell fill color, and then we can change this other one to cells highlight color. Perfect. So now these two variables are highlighted in red because we never defined them within our constructor. So if we come down to our constructor, if you remember, we created a typed array of variable A. So this is what's storing all the attributes that we define in our XML code. And then we need to extract a specific attribute. So our cell fill color and our cell highlight color and store them into our corresponding Java variables. So to do that, we can again copy and paste this line here and just change the variable names a bit. So instead of board color, we're going to do cell fill color. So copy and paste that. And then we need to change this one from Sudoku board board color to Sudoku board underscore cell fill color. And then we need to do the same thing for our cells highlight color. So again, change this to Sudoku boards cells highlight color. And now we've extracted the corresponding value that was defined in our XML code and brought that over into our Java file so we can work with that color then. So now what we got to do is create two new instances of our paint class for the attributes that we just extracted from our typed array. So this is going to be exactly like what we did for our board color. So I'm going to again copy and paste this line that we use for our board color, paste it in twice, and then we're just going to change the variable names. And I'm going to keep the same naming scheme here. So I'm just going to tack on paint at the end of this variable. And then I'm going to do the same thing for ourselves highlight color. I'm just going to tack on paint. So now we created two new paint instances and we need to come down to our on draw. And again, we're going to copy and paste these three lines here and then change this from board color paint to our cells fill color paint. And all we're doing guys is just setting up our paint classes. So we're actually able to draw on our view. So we're going to paste that in and then we need to change this to our cell fill color. So this is going to assign our paint bucket to whatever color we designated in our XML file. And then we need to change this from stroke to fill because we want to fill up the entire cell. We don't want to draw a box around it. We want the whole thing to be filled up. So then let's copy and paste this. And then instead of using the cell fill color, we'll use our cell highlight color variable. So copy this guy, come down, change these variables. And then we need to change this from cell fill color to cells highlight color. And then we're all set up for our new attributes. Now I did go through that really fast, mainly because in the last video we went in depth about what each of those lines are really doing. But if you do have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll help you out. And come to think of it, I probably went through it a little bit too fast because I copied and pasted a little bit wrong. We don't need a set stroke width because we're filling up the entire box. So we need this anti alias though. So copy and paste this line and replace all the stroke widths with the anti alias line. So now what I'd like to do is create our solver class. Now, later on, the solver class is going to contain all the logic that's going to actually solve the Sudoku board for us. But for now, I want to set it up because we're going to need to reference two variables that will be contained within our solver class. So I just want to create this thing right now. So if we come over to the far left panel, if we come all the way over to our Java file here and expand every folder within here, if we right click Sudoku solver or whatever you happen to name this project, 
you can click new Java class and then name it. I'm going to name it solver and then hit enter and keep all of these blank and then click OK. And then what Android Studio should do is bring you over to the solver.java file and you should see something similar to this. Now what I'd like to do first is create our constructor. So let's go solver. And then the two variables that we're going to need is the selected row and the selected columns, so whatever column or row the user clicks on. So we're going to come above our constructor and then I'm going to type in private static int selected row and that and then I'm going to copy and paste this line and then we're going to do the same exact thing here but instead of selected row we're going to call it selected column. So now that we have these two variables defined let's actually set a value to them in our constructor. So I'm going to go selected row and I'm going to give this a value of negative one and I'll explain why we're doing this later on once we start writing a bit more code and then I'm going to set selected column also equal to negative one. So now what we got to do is create the getters and setters for the two variables that we just created. So if we come past our constructor, we could type in public int get selected row. I'm going to change this a little bit. Oop. And then all we have to do is return our selected row. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. And instead of having get selected row, we're going to type in get selected column. And then change this from selected row to selected column. And then what we got to do is create our setters. So if we type in public void, we could type in set selected row. And again, I'm going to change this. And then we're going to pass in an integer of R. And then I'm going to go selected row equals R. And then again, we're going to copy paste this line and change everything from selected row to selected column. Change this R to a C and then don't forget selected column equals C. So now we have our solver class all set up for this video and again later on we will be adding a few more methods in here that will actually solve the Sudoku board that the user types in. So now let's come over to our Sudoku board.java file and we can actually create an instance of our solver class. So we come up to the top we can come past all these and type in private final solver and I'm just going to call it solver equals a new solver. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is override the on touch event method. So what does this method do? All it does is give us data about touch events that happens on the user's screen. So if the user swipes the screen we can get data about that or if the user taps the screen we can also get like the x and y coordinates of the tap which is what we're going to be using this method for obtaining the x and y coordinates of the user's tap. So we're going to come past our on draw method as we're going to override the on touch event method. So again, we're going to override it. So type in at override. So come past this and we're going to type in public boolean on touch event. And then within its arguments, we're going to type in motion event. And then I'm just going to call this event, close this off. And then the first thing I want to do is create a boolean variable. This is what we're going to be returning. So I'm going to type in boolean and I'm going to call this variable is valid and I'm not going to define it as anything right now. And then what I want to do before I forget is type in return is valid and we're going to get an error because we haven't defined anything for it but we will define it later on. So after this what I want to do is extract the x and y coordinates from a tap from our event. So to do that we're going to type in float x equals event dot get x and then we're going to come past that and then type in float y equals event dot get y and all this is doing is extracting the x and y coordinates from the tap event that occurred on the user's screen. So now after this what I want to do is create a variable that's going to store the event that occurred. So whether or not it was a swipe or a tap or if the user pressed and held on the screen. So to do that I'm going to type in int call this variable action, set that equal to event dot get action. And what this is going to allow us to do is differentiate between the types of taps that can occur on screen. So then we can come past this and we can create an if statement that can weed out all the other taps that we don't want. So in our case what we want to do is type in if action equals motion event dot 
action down. So this is going to be a press or a click on the screen. So if that happens, we want to return is valid equals true. Otherwise, we want to return is valid equals false. But we're not done with this method just yet. What we have to do is convert the X and Y coordinates into their corresponding row and column value for our Sudoku board. So if we come back into this if statement here, so if it was a click event, we're going to come above our is valid variable. And then what we're going to do is set the row and column in our solver class with our setters that we just created. So we're going to type in solver, which is going to refer to the instance of our solver class dot set row. And then what we're going to use is the math dot ceiling function, which is going to allow us to obtain an integer value rather than a decimal value. So we're going to type in math dot ceiling and then we're going to do y divided by whatever our cell size is and then we're going to come past this i'm going to copy and paste this line and do the same exact thing for our column so instead of row i'm going to type in column and then instead of using the y coordinate we're going to use the x coordinate and android studio is a little mad about this because it's returning a double when our methods here wanted an integer value so what we have to do is just cast on int so open and closing parentheses and just type in int and that'll fix the problem. So I'm going to copy and paste this and paste it into our other method here. And now we're good to go. All right, we're starting to look pretty good so far. We got our on touch event all set up, but you'll notice that this is highlighted in yellow. And if we hover over this, you can see Android Studio wants us to suppress this. I'm going to add it in just to make Android Studio happy. So this should be good now. If we come past our onTouch event, what I want to do now is create one more method in this video. And what this method is going to actually do is draw in the rectangles to color in the corresponding cell that the user clicked. So if we come past our onTouch event, I'm just going to define it right after here. And then we're going to go private void and I'm going to call it color cell. And then this is going to take in a few things. One, we're going to take in the canvas. So we're going to go canvas and I'm going to call them canvas. And then we're going to take in the row and column as well. So I'm going to go int r for row. And then we're going to go int c for column. Close this off. And then the next thing we're going to, have to do is create an if statement. And what this if statement is going to do is allow us to determine whether or not the row and column is valid. So if you remember, in our solver class, we set our row and column initially to negative 1. So this is where that's going to come into play. So we're going to go if solver dot get selected column does not equal negative one and solver dot get row does not equal negative one so within this if statement all i want to do is place in the code that's going to highlight the cell that the user clicked along with the corresponding row and column so to do that we're going to come within our if statement and i'm going to type in canvas dot draw rect and I'm going to place in all the values that go into the draw rect function. And then I'll come back at the end once I have them all in and explain it a little bit better. And what might help is me telling you that we're going to do the columns first. So the first thing we're going to do is pass in C minus one times the cell size. And then we're going to pass in a zero. Then we're going to pass in a C times cell size. And then finally, we're going to go cell size times nine. And then the last argument has to be the paint. So we're going to type in cells highlight color paint. And let me tab this over so you guys can see this. So it might be a little confusing. So if I run the emulator, I could explain this line of code really quick. So say the user opens up the app and they click this middle most cell right here. I believe this is column number five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so this is column number five. We wanna highlight this one right here. So if you remember in our on touch event, we grab the X and Y coordinates of a click. And then we take those coordinates and convert them into their corresponding row and column. So if we take a look at this draw rect line right here. You see we have C minus one. Now, since we clicked the fifth column, that should be a five minus one giving us a four and then if we times that by cell size we should obtain this line right here and then the next argument is set to zero which is going to reference this line segment up here and then we go c times cell size which will give us this line right here and finally we have cell size times nine which will ultimately give us the bottom part of our sudoku board 
And then we have our cells highlight color paint, which is going to allow us to draw that rectangle onto our Sudoku board. So all these four arguments are doing is defining this rectangle right here. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment down below and I'll try to explain it a little bit differently. So now what we have to do is color in the corresponding row. So I'm gonna copy and paste this line and swap some things around a bit. Instead of having the C minus one times cell size here, I'm gonna copy this and place in a zero here and then change this zero to R minus one times cell size. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna flip these two attributes. So I'm gonna copy this line here and then I'm gonna pass in cell size times nine on the third argument and then paste in the one we just copied over here. And don't forget, we have to change the C to an R and this is gonna stay the same. Then what we can do next is copy and paste this line here and to highlight the specific cell that the user clicked on, all we gotta do is swap out two arguments. So we're gonna copy and paste this C minus one times cell size, paste that into our zero slot here and then come up to where we defined our column, copy and paste the C times cell size and paste that in for our cell size times nine because we don't want it to go to the bottom of the board. So again, if this doesn't make sense to you, just leave a comment and I'll try to explain it a little bit differently. So now that we have all of our cells highlighted, what we have to do is refresh our Sudoku board. So to do that, we have to use the invalidate method and then that all it does is going to redraw or you can think of it as refreshing our Sudoku board. Now that we have this all done, we need to come back up to our on draw method and then actually draw in those rectangles. So if we come above this rectangle and when we draw our board, we could type in color cell and we need to pass in the canvas and then the row and column. So we're gonna go solver, which is the solver class dot get selected row. And then we're gonna go solver dot get selected column. I believe it was, it was row and column, I believe, right? Yeah, row and then column. Okay, so we're good. Now there's one last thing we have to do and that's actually defining the attributes that we just created in our activity main.xml file. So to do that, remember we created our own custom attributes. So if we come over to the adders.xml, I'm just gonna copy and paste this guy. So our cell fill color, we have to define that. So if we come past our last custom attribute, I'm gonna type in custom to add in another one, colon, paste in that attribute, set him equal to a new color. And I already have one picked out, so I'm gonna copy and paste that, paste him into here. You can use whatever color you want, but this is a light blue. Then we're gonna type in custom again to add in our final attribute. So I'm gonna come back over to the adders.xml file and just copy and paste this in so I don't have any typos. Paste him in and set this guy equal to another color, which I also picked out before recording this video paste him in there, which is a lighter shade of blue. And now we should be good to go to actually run this program. So let's actually test the app. So I'm gonna come up to the top right hand corner, click the play button to run our emulator. Let this load up. And you can see we got this here. And when I click a cell, the corresponding row and column are highlighted along with the cell that I clicked, which is a different shade of blue. And you can click all around this and the rows and columns will shift around. It's pretty cool. If we go outside of our Sudoku board, nothing happens. It stays at that row and column. And if we click within it, it'll change dependent upon which column and row we click. So this is probably a good spot to end this video. In the next one, what I'd like to do is make it so we can actually add in numbers to our Sudoku board. As always, if you guys have any questions or if you're just having trouble getting something to work, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to help you guys out. If you guys did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.